Another example, we have 20 pound block A on a 30 pound block B. We've got a cable, we've got friction coefficient between the blocks, zero between the blocks and the ground. Find the angle where it's not going to slip. So just barely before this thing starts sliding. So here we go. Label everything on your diagram to get started with. So we have the friction between the blocks is 0 0.15. On the ground is zero. That'll make this much easier. And we want to figure out what angle is right before it slides. So right on the edge of moving. Think about which way it's going to move. 30 pounds is larger. So B is going to slide down and A is going to slide up. And we're going to start by analyzing block A. So isolate that top block and we're going to draw all of the forces acting on A and look at everything in the normal and tangent directions. OK, so we've got that 20 pounds acting down. And then there's some kind of a normal force between the two. Which direction is friction going? Remember what direction the block is going. So if 20 is sliding up, that means the friction is going to go down. There's going to be a lot of little equal and opposite pairs of forces here. So really think through what force is acting on what object. This is with respect to A. So the friction is going down. Here we go, let's go ahead and split that weight into the normal and tangent components. So we've got part of that 20 pounds is acting in the same direction as friction, and those two are opposing the tension, versus the normal force is going to be that other chunk of the 20 pounds. Now, how does that angle map around? Think about where that angle is going to show up and make sure you see why that angle is showing up where it is. So let's go ahead and write some equations for A. So we can, instead of looking at x and y directions, look at normal and tangent directions. So everything in the normal direction, that's everything in green. So we have the normal force going up and 20 cosine theta coming down. And we don't know that theta yet, so we can't solve for the normal force, but we know it's a function of theta. OK, the tangent direction. So in the tangent direction, we have the tension is fighting against two things. So the tension is fighting against the 20 sine theta piece of the weight and also fighting against the friction. So there's some two equations that we have. and we can rearrange this so we know our normal force is 20 cosine theta, and then we can solve for the tension. That tension is what's going to connect the top block to the bottom block. So this last equation we have is tension as a function of theta. We're going to use that again when we analyze block B. OK, so a couple different substitutions in here, but you're just adding forces in x and y or tangent normal direction. Next up, we're going to do the same thing for block B. So we're isolating block B and looking at the forces acting on the second block. So we have blocks on weight. So B weighs 30 pounds. Only part of A's weight is pushing on B. So part of A is held up by the tension, and only part of it is pushing on B. So be very careful to kind of think about what is actually applied on B. B is going to move down, which means the friction force is moving up. So this is opposite of the direction on A. So there's a little equal and opposite pair of forces between A and B. And for B, the friction is trying to keep it from sliding down the hill. We have a tension. This tension is the same on both blocks if there's no friction in the pulley. So we'll say that tension is the same. It connects them. And here's the normal force underneath block B. So there's, there's a couple things that are going to be going into that normal force. There's part of the 30-pound weight and also part of the 20-pound weight that goes into that. So let's go ahead and figure out what that normal force is. 
part of the 30 pounds is going into the normal force and part of the 20 pounds is going in. That's going to be cosine theta for each of them, where theta is also the angle that the inclined plane is at. So we've got normal force holding up 30 cosine theta and 20 cosine theta. For the tangent direction, be very, very careful on the sign convention for this. So from B's perspective, force is acting on B. It has no, ten, no friction force at the bottom, which simplifies things. But then at the top, because block A is trying to move up, the friction is pulling up on B from the top. So imagine it's like Velcro or something when you think of those friction force. So A is trying to pull it up through friction. And then we have tension pulling up and the weight, 30 sine theta, pulling down. OK, so now that we have normal and tangent for both blocks, what we want is something just a function of that angle. So we're going to need to get rid of that tension, which means that we need to go back to our previous calculation. So here's what we found on A for tension. I'm going to take this equation for tension from A, and we're going to copy and paste it over and then plug it in for that tension in B. OK, so once we get rid of the tension term, everything is in terms of theta. And we can solve for what theta it is. It ends up being 31 degrees. OK, so hopefully that was a good example of taking a problem, breaking it into pieces, seeing what connects those pieces, like in this case, the tension connected those two blocks to one another, and then just cranking through a little bit of algebra to solve for what you need.